Hello YouTubers and 3D printing enthusiasts. I thought I would take a moment to talk about file formats and 3D printing and smooth prints. Occasionally I run across online somebody proclaiming, um, sometimes loudly, if you want the smoothest 3D prints you have to use the step file to export your models for importing into the slicer. And I understand why that's the common wisdom, uh, but there are there's more to it than that. Um, there's a few details that they aren't considering, and it is actually, believe it or not, possible to get a smoother print with an STL file versus a step. But we'll get into we'll get into that in a moment. Let's first talk about uh, 3D printing in the hobbyist and uh, community and slicers. Now, 3D printing has existed for quite a while. It's been experimented with since the 1980s, 90s in the industry. But it wasn't until about 2011, 2010, 2011, that it entered the hobbyist space. And in 2011, one of the first uh, slicers, which some people pronounce this slick 3R. Uh, it's the word slicer with the E turned around to make it a 3. Uh, and I'll go ahead and just pronounce it that way through the rest of the video. It was one of the first major open source slicing projects that was started in 2011 and is still being developed today. Being open source, it's the basis for several of the popular big slicers today. Prusa Slicer, Orca Slicer, even Bamboo Studio are based on Slick 3R as its core. And that's important as well. Uh, but file formats. Let's talk about file formats for a minute. Back in 2011, the format that was embraced for 3D printing was the STL format. Stereolithography is what that stands for. And that format was actually developed by 3D Systems back in 1987 alongside their, um, their technology for 3D printing. It was one of the earliest forms of 3D printing back in 87. So it was embraced by the community for the slicers, for Slick 3R, and uh, other slicers that came around as well, like Cura. Now, STL defines a mesh. A, a mesh, like, think of chicken wire wrapped around a shape, okay? Um, except that instead of octagonal shapes like you see in chicken wire, they're triangles. Uh, so that's what an STL file is. It defines a mesh around a three-dimensional shape. And the problem with that can be it's a mesh of flat triangles. So if the resolution is low enough, you end up with a model that has, where, where a curved surface would be, it's a series of flat surfaces that sort of approximate a curve. That's called faceting, and that can show up in your prints, especially on curved surfaces, or you know, in, in high detail models like miniatures or artistic pieces like vases or whatever, um, that faceting can be an issue. And so the step file, which is touted as the best way to go for smooth prints, um, well, okay, let's look at the step file. The step file uh, was actually developed earlier than the STL format. It was uh, in the mid-1980s that it was defined, and it was defined to be a file format for exchanging data between CAD programs. Uh, it's up, it's, the last revision of it was in 2016. It hasn't been updated since. But what a step file does is it doesn't define a mesh, it defines the shapes that make up a 3D model. Surfaces, curves, shapes, it's more like a CAD program in that regard um, where the shapes are just defined mathematically. So you could zoom in infinitely on a curve and it would still be a curve. Similar to the way SVG, scalable vector graphics, work in two-dimensional files. So that's where the reasoning comes that a step file is going to give you the smoothest 3D print. But here's the catch. The slicers have been built around mathematically dealing with a mesh. There's over a decade of development on this, this, these algorithms and this math and this core code that is designed specifically for dealing with a mesh. So they're not going to rewrite all of that to deal with the defined geometry that a step file provides. What happens when you import a step file into a slicer is the first thing it does is converts it back into a triangulated mesh in memory. 
And you can see that when you zoom in on an imported step file. And we'll look at a couple examples here uh, on the computer. So I have here this helical vase that I sculpted in uh, FreeCAD. And looking at the STL on an STL viewer, you can clearly see the tessellation of all of the triangular faces in the mesh. And if we import that into a slicer, for example, here I'm in Orca Slicer, current version. I'll do a new project and I will import that step file. This is the default STL that you get out of FreeCAD. And you can clearly see when we zoom in the tessellation. See all the triangular faces? And especially on these curved sections here, they're stretched out. They're just, they're really well defined. And if we 3D print this, you will clearly see them on the 3D print. Especially on a silver metallic print like I did for this video here, you can see the, uh, the triangles clearly showing up in the reflections. Now let's import the step file version of that vase. It's going to take it a moment because what it's doing is converting that into a mesh in memory. Uh, if we come in here now and we zoom in, it looks a lot better. But if we zoom in close, look at that. You can still see the triangular faces of the mesh that it created in memory. They're smaller, which makes the model smoother. And when this prints, it will be a lot smoother. And we'll take a close look at that in a moment. But you can clearly see that it did create a mesh. So it really depends on the slicer when it imports the, the step file, how dense of a mesh it creates in memory is going to determine how smooth your print is. It might not be as smooth as you would think. Um, in fact, we, well, we saw some examples there. So I said earlier that you could, you could actually achieve a smoother result with an STL than you can with a step in some cases. So this is the original model in FreeCAD, and I'm going to create a denser mesh of it for export. So I'll select the last operation in the model tree, so I've got the object selected, and we're going to go to the mesh workbench. If you don't have this, you can add it in with the add-on manager. In the mesh workbench, there is this tool, Create Mesh from Shape. I've already modified these values, surface deviation and angular deviation. By default, this was 0.1 millimeters, and this was 30 degrees. And I've gone, gone way down to one micrometer and five degrees. This is gonna create a very dense mesh, and it's gonna take a little while to do. I'll hit OK. We'll go ahead and just fast forward to when it's finished. OK, it's finished. It took a little while, but now we have this object over here called meshed. This is our dense mesh. So if I, if I have that selected and I export as an STL, dense meshed object here, and it is 93 megabytes. The default STL was only 3.1 megabytes. So you get pretty huge files. But if I open that with an STL viewer now and we zoom in, you can hardly tell that there's any facets in there at all. They are there. I can zoom way in and we start to just start to see them, these color shifts in here. It's not very clear, but this is a very, very dense mesh. Now back in Orca Slicer, I'm going to import that dense mesh. It'll take it just a little bit longer to bring in and it will take it longer to process it too when it's slicing. But if we zoom way in here, you can still see the triangles. There's a lot more of them, and especially here, you can, you can still see them. You can see how much denser that is. And this will actually produce a slightly smoother print than the step file import did. Now the downside to a dense mesh is file size and memory usage. You can end up with an object that has millions of polygons, and your slicer is going to have to chew up a ton of memory and take a lot longer to process it but you can potentially end up with a smoother model using STL this way than you might with the step file. I printed the helical vase off three times using Orca Slicer on my Prusa MK4S printer. 
I used the same material, a silk silver PLA. Nozzle temperature was 230 to give it a shiny finish. Everything was the same except the models. I imported a default STL uh, from FreeCAD, a step file, and the dense mesh. And these are the results. Now, obviously, the default STL, you can see the polygonal shapes reflected. It's very rough. Uh, this is a fine resolution, though, for mechanical parts. But if you're doing visual art pieces, you definitely want something smoother. This is the imported step file. Nothing was changed in Orca. I, Orca Slicer, when it imported it, and it was just a default export from FreeCAD. And then this is the denser mesh that I made in FreeCAD over here on the right. And you can see right away the difference between these two. There is just a smoother appearance to the one on the right, the dense mesh. If we uh, look at things a little closer up, like down here on the foot, you can really see the, the uh, sort of a gritty graininess to it over here, an uneven kind of spattering and along this uh, edge. And you look over here and it's, it's got a pattern, but it's a more regular pattern. It's a smoother fall off. Look how much smoother this falls off over here versus this. And there's this, this strange kind of horizontal comb pattern in here. I'm not sure what causes that. There's a little bit of a comb pattern here. It's not nearly as pronounced. But when you look at like these edges, these, these sharper curves here, this is just sharper and, and grittier looking. This is so much smoother over here on the right. And there was some strange distortions. Look at this kind of a fold that appeared in here. And there's like a another band in here where this surface is not, not continuously smooth. I chose this model because there is such a graceful, gentle curve and multiple curve directions to get light reflecting off it. And you can just see a difference in the smoothness. Look how this edge is sharper looking. And then this just kind of falls off smoothly here. It, it just looks so much smoother with the dense mesh. Orca Slicer, I can't find any definition anywhere or preference setting to allow you to determine how dense of a mesh it creates. It just seems to have a default value. Prusa Slicer has, on the most recent version, introduced a dialog when you import a step file that lets you choose a quality. You can set it to a custom value or they give you three defaults. Now I've looked at it uh, up close and at the lowest resolution setting it seems to be about the same as the default in Orca Slicer. There's a medium quality setting which honestly is probably as high as you'll ever have to go. It is so smooth there's no way an FDM printer would ever not resolve that. It, it's, it's probably the best you'd have to go. And then there's a high quality setting which is just ridiculous. The, the number of polygons it generates is, is huge. And of course, it's absolutely smooth, the resulting tool paths. I bet your Orca Slicer is going to include it eventually. I have heard from somebody else that uh, Bamboo Studio gives you this option when you import a step file where you can set the uh, smoothness. So is step file just the way to go? Um, if your slicer you know, lets you set a higher quality? Maybe. But there are other issues with the step file format. If we go to the, step, the wiki for the step file, under criticisms, down here near the bottom, we see the format is not well defined. For example, the same triangle can be encoded in many different ways, and it gives some examples there. And that's just one example. Most CAD software does not support the full set of step, of step entries, and as such are limited to specific subset of step entries. And they give another example from Autodesk and their knowledge base. So there is a potential problem with STEP. As they said there, not every CAD program implements all of the options within STEP. So your CAD program might export a certain subset of geometry, and you might import that into the slicer and be missing parts of the geometry. I have seen this, and I've seen other people report this as well that they're sometimes missing geometry when they import step files. So it's kind of hit or miss. Most of the time, it works really well. A step file is really common amongst companies to exchange CAD files. Uh, it's also a little more easily editable than um, an STL file. If you pull it into your CAD so uh, software, you can't completely edit it, but that's a subject for a whole other video. 
Um, so step files, are they the best way to go to get the absolute best prints all the time? Maybe not. Most of the time, sure, um, you're going to get good results. And like I said, it just depends on the slicer. But you do have that potential issue of missing geometry uh, when you import a step file. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So it really comes down to a use case. In mechanical parts, functional parts, you're not really worried too much about the perfect curved surface or whatever. It's it's just not that important. Art pieces, uh, miniatures, high detail models for show that you're going to be printing on a resin printer. Uh, in those cases, you might want that extra resolution. A step file will give you a nice small file size. Um, it's not really going to save on processing time in the slicer because again the slicer is going to convert it into a mesh before it processes it. So. If you have that resolution setting high in, in Prusa Slicer, it's going to use a lot of memory and it's going to take a long time to process that file because it's going to create a mesh with millions upon millions of polygons. You're not really going to save time with a step file format. You're going to save file size primarily. And generally, generally, you're going to get a smoother print. So that's some information on the STL versus step. I hope you found that informative. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.